Hey everyone, welcome back to your Java series. Today we're going to be talking about the array list in Java. Now, if you have experience with arrays and you want to move on to something a little bit better, then this is the video for you because trust me, array lists are going to make your life a whole lot easier. Now, before we get started, check out our sponsor. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. So coming from arrays, you probably understand how they work, how you can index them and so forth. But the benefit of an array list is that they can dynamically resize. So with an array, you set that size up front or maybe you get that size from user input, but once it's set, you're done. You're not able to add elements beyond the size of that array. Array lists are different because if you add extra information to them, it'll actually resize as necessary to fit that information. So it's a much better solution for working with collections of data. It's just easier all around better. So let's talk about the syntax for creating an array list. You're gonna have to import something, but we'll worry about that in the next video where we're doing the hands-on version of this. For now, let's just talk about the concept of array lists. It's gonna look like this. You're going to say array list just like that, and then you're going to put the less than, greater than, symbols, whatever they're called, alligator mouths, and you're going to put the type in here. Now, we'll talk about this in just a second, but first, let's finish out the rest of this. We're going to give it a name, and then we can assign it a new array list, and then parentheses. All right, so that's the whole thing. First, let's talk about the less than, greater than sign. So whenever you see this, it's what's known as a generic. So generic programming allows you to basically create a class that can work with various types. That's the syntax. We'll probably get into that later on in this series. Essentially, all you really need to know is, you see that those symbols, you're expected to put a type in there, such as integer. So the reason we have the uppercase I with integer spelled out is because it's actually going to expect a class here. If you go back and watch our videos on types, You'll, you'll hear a little bit more about int versus integer, but essentially it's just a wrapper around int. So we make it a class type, we're good to go. So that is the entire structure. And then to put stuff inside of this list, all you gotta do is say grades dot add, and then in parentheses, you can put the value such as five. That's going to push it onto the array list. To get an element, here's what you do grades.get, and then in parentheses, you put the index such as zero, that's going to return the value five. If you wanna update that spot, you can use grades.set, where you pass in the index, give it a new value such as 10, and you're good to go. That's going to update index zero, and it'll replace the value five. The list is also going to have a size method, which is going to give you how many elements are in the array. So just say grades.size, and this is a method here, so make sure you put those parentheses that's going to return a value, 